Hello, I'm so happy to have you here in this chat room and in this internet conversation. Uh, may I, I'm, I'm Francisco Osorio from the University of Chile. I'm a journal editor and very, very interested in your proposal. So may I please ask you to introduce yourself, please. I'm Beth Pop Berman. I'm an associate professor of sociology at uh, the University at Albany, SUNY, and I am on the steering committee of Social Archive. Hi, I'm Philip Cohen. I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Maryland. Uh, uh, also on the steering committee, I guess like the first member of the steering committee of Social Archive. And uh, uh, I'm really happy to be here. So thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, may I start with you, Philip, please? From where? Social archives start. What it's why this is the time for preprint service in social science. Well, I think there is a, a growing consensus that we have problems with our scholarly communication with our publication system, um, and there's a lot of disagreement about um, what are the most important problems and what are the most important solutions, um, or the most pressing or feasible solutions, or what the appropriate scale of of approaches to the to the problems that we have, but if the problems include um, high cost, um, uh, lack of access and visibility, um, uh, opaque uh, processes of review, uh, 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 sort of obsession with status uh, symbols that are may or may not uh, be correlated with quality, um, th these are some of the problems that we've identified: long delays in publication. Um, uh, a lot of people agree on some combination of those problems, and uh, a paper archive, a research archive, is um, something that chips away at all of those problems uh, to one degree or another. So it's um, it's a way to disseminate research rapidly, uh, to find uh, the right audience, the people who want to read uh, your work now. Um, it's open, um, a Social Archive anyway is open, open source and open access uh, and free because of the grant support. Uh, that our technology partner, the Center for Open Science, has. So uh, it's a great first step uh, for uh, for us to take in the direction of um, repairing our our system of of uh, scholarly communication. Yeah, just add to that. I mean, I think from my perspective, a lot of the initial conversation was about the slowness of the journal process and the fact that it's taking people years to get their completed research into journals and more broadly accessible, and even at that point, because there's so many paywalls around, it's not necessarily still accessible to a wide range of people, only to people with the right kind of academic access. And so having a preprint server um, kind of helps speed that process up. Um, it doesn't address the peer review question so directly, although it has the potential to do that depending on what's built into the system, and there's a lot of possibilities for different kinds of options at this point. Um, and I think it also speaks to this larger conversation that's been happening across the social sciences about how do we think about validity and replicability and making our research more open and kind of more um, more of an ongoing process rather than something that just sort of goes out there for one moment in time and then uh, nobody knows what's really going on behind the curtains. Uh, please let me Beth, continue with you in the second question. It's what is the relationship between social archive and journals as we know them today? I'm curious to hear what Philip was going to say to this, but uh, I mean, from my perspective, um, the immediate relationship, you know, I don't think it's immediately that much of a challenge to the existing journal system because it's basically a way of taking research that's going to be published in traditional journals anyway and opening it up by getting it out, a version of it out there earlier and making it more accessible uh, to people who maybe don't have access to the journals because they're behind a paywall. And so there's a part of it that doesn't have to be a very active challenge to the existing journal system. I mean, in the long run, I think it does have the potential to provide other kinds of challenges to journals because it does have the possibility of building in various kinds of peer review options. Um, and that's something that the steering committee is going to be talking about is, is what are the different possibilities for thinking about adding those kinds of functions within the context of social archives. So whether that's having individuals who are responsible for sort of collating particular groups of research in a particular area so that maybe you've got a working paper series where there's just sort of editorial supervision but not formal peer review or something that looks like more traditional peer review 
or there's also the option of just putting research out there and having it uh, available for other people to comment on. So it's not formally peer reviewed, but there's a commenting option and uh, other scholars can add to or critique or react to papers that are online. So uh, I think in the short run, not a radical challenge. In the long run, it has the potential to be a little more, um, uh, be a little bit of a stronger alternative to the existing system. Thank you. Any case, uh, a little bit more disruptive, I think, is the word they would say, right? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that question of the um, of the 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 challenge or or not to the uh, existing system is really important. We we can't um, sort of offer um, a, a standalone alternative to an existing system which has decades of inertia and um, huge. Uh, 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 very large, very powerful actors, uh, careers that are built on uh, the way of, uh, of operating that we have now and so on. So um, uh, we, we couldn't sort of put up an alternative and, and, and tell people to abandon their careers as they know them and come over here and try this other thing. Um, and and, I'm not, and I, we're not ready to do that. We don't have an alternative exactly to propose. But I think it's really important to, to begin our consideration of alternatives around the construction construction uh, of infrastructure that has some core principles that's that's nonprofit and open source and open access uh, uh, and uh, uh, and offers the potential to build on it um, in many different directions and like Beth says we can do everything from here's a place to put your paper and show your friends to here's a place to organize an informal working group here's a place to uh, uh, to put up a, a working paper series or a curated list um, uh, all the way to here's a, a building a journal here's building a journal with open peer review here's uh, uh, um, inline um, uh, commenting uh, here's replication which is linked to the documents and the, you know the things that can expand offer great potential um, uh, in ways that can be extremely disruptive in the sense of like Beth says and the idea of our of our social science producing a single a paper, which is the moment of research, um, is an artifact of the technology of a long time ago. Um, uh, if research is if we think of research much more as an ongoing process with different points of engagement, different opportunities for feedback and dialogue and collaboration, those things can happen much earlier in the process than they happen now. Uh, and we can really do uh, we can do a you know we we can start working on those um, uh, those. Up, upgrades to our research process without taking down the existing system. Let me continue with you, please. Um, why social scientists should participate in social archive? What's your invitation? Well, I think there's a very important moment here, and, and Beth and I are both sociologists. Um, and this is a big conversation in sociology, but I know it's happening in other disciplines as well, um, where social scientists are looking for ways to uh, increase their engagement um, with the public, with the media, with the political process, with policy uh, makers, uh, with students, and. Uh, it's there's there's an uh, there's a, a unfortunate disconnect often between our research and our engagement work where we produce our research and the research is out there and then as a separate activity we try to uh, embark on some engagement project like writing op eds or blogs or or uh, 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 joining organizations and so on and and I think one thing that uh, we would offer to social scientists is to bring those two things back together and play to your strength and say. You're a researcher, you're an expert on what you know, and the work that you do as a research, researcher does not have to be a separate project from the work that you do uh, in, your, uh, in, your, uh, in your search for, en for engagement with wider publics. And so with a more rapid and open dissemination of research, that's a great opportunity to sort of do that and put your best foot forward. So that's one thing that we really offer to to researchers to consider is who, who are trying to reach a broader audience. And the one other thing, the one other suggestion, I'm sure Beth has others, is um, uh, to, to work sooner and more open to, to uh, overcome our fear of being wrong, our fear of being scooped, um, our fear of doing something which doesn't receive appropriate credit, and realize that uh, turning our, our research outward has the potential to identify collaborators earlier, identify errors earlier, uh, uh, field test our work, um, allow people to start 
start uh, uh, replicating and challenging us at an earlier stage in the process when the stakes are lower in a way um, to improve the final product. And so that's 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 a way of reorienting our research careers, which is which is really a challenge, and we invite people to consider it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the main thing that I would add to that is that clearly there's a lot of interest among academics. Um, certainly in getting their research out to a broader public, but also just to disseminating it within the academic community and sort of trying to find, you know, trying to make sure that other people in your discipline and adjacent disciplines kind of know what you're doing and have access to it. And I think um, we're at this moment where there are a lot of people, especially younger scholars, who are doing that by putting their research onto sites like Academia or like ResearchGate. And those are, you know, do make research available to a closed community of people, but um, they're privately owned. They, you know, ResearchGate was bought by Elsevier not so long ago. There are a lot of questions about what those are going to look like in the future, and we're sort of buying into this. It, if that's the route we go, we're buying into this infrastructure that is based on, that, it, that relies on companies that don't really have the interests of open science and kind of building a community of knowledge in mind. And so I think, I think um, in addition to just sort of encouraging people to pursue their own interest in terms of, you know, yeah, you want to be able to get your research out there and have people read it and have it be as accessible as possible, uh, it's also worth investing in doing that within the context of an infrastructure that's going to be open and that is committed to this ideal of open access and dissemination and that isn't down the road going to end up having to figure out somehow how to monetize all these page views that they've got to uh, in order to kind of satisfy venture capitalists that's kind of got the interest of the social scientific or the academic community in mind more generally. Oh, many things. Philip, can I close with some final words from you? Well, it, I uh, thank you for having us, and I think uh, I'm really uh, excited to have this opportunity. I want to also mention um, for our international viewers, uh, Social Archive and the the server that it's on at the Center for Open Science um, uh, accepts work in many, many languages. Um, we will eventually need uh, volunteer moderators um, to uh, review work that comes in in, in every language that people want to submit in. Um, so we hope we can build a base of people who are engaged community members who uh, uh, will volunteer some of their time, will take some of that time that they may be now uh, voluntarily giving to a for-profit company like Elsevier or others, um, and, and, and redirect that same energy uh, and that same effort to uh, to building open open alternatives for the future of publishing. And so uh, I, I just, I think it's an exciting time for us, and with the technology we have, we have uh, a, a, an exciting range of options, and I'm, I'm just happy to be to be doing this, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for this this interview. Um, for now, thank you very much and see you in the near future. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you.